Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell Precision T5500 workstation upgrades and how to properly load the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision T5500 workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful in this video, click the like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Uh, first things first, uh, this is a dual socket uh, system, meaning that you can put in two CPUs. Uh, it utilizes Intel Xeon 5500 or 5600 series uh, uh, processors, which is an LGA 1366 socket. Uh, what I recommend personally is there's a couple of uh, hex cores out there that you can get pretty cheap nowadays, like uh, X5650, X5660, uh, X5670, the E5645. Really, all those are good choices where you can get uh, basically 2.66 and up and get hex cores. Um, so that's what I'd personally recommend. And nowadays, you get them for you know a pair of them for like 60, 70 bucks. So they're pretty cheap. Um, as far as the uh, the RAM inside, uh, there are nine DIMM slots. It utilizes DDR3 memory. Uh, I should point out to get to the nine DIMM slots, you do have to have the optional riser. Same thing to get to two CPUs, you have to have the optional riser, which we'll actually show you in a minute how to physically take that in and out. Uh, but the optional riser has three DIMMs on it, and the main motherboard will have six DIMMs, and that's how you get to nine DIMMs total. Uh, you can use a number of different speeds. You can go as low as uh, 1066, 13, 1333, or as high as 1600 megahertz. However, with the 1600 megahertz, it's just going to clock down to 1333. So really, we always recommend to people just to go ahead and buy 1333 unless they're the same cost. Um, as far as the different sizes you can use, you can use 2 gig, 4 gig, uh, 8 gig, or yes, you can use 16 gigs. I do understand the Dell spec sheet says that it will max out at um, uh, only 9, 8 gigs. However, you can put in um, 9, 16 gigs. I have only tested it with the 5600 series, so if you're at home and it's not working for you, likely it might just be a CPU or BIOS update that you need to do just to make sure that you can get the 16 gig modules to work. Unfortunately, 32 gig DIMMs will not work with this machine. We did test it out. Uh, we tried um, as you know a couple different speeds of them and none of them worked. So uh, unfortunately, 32 gigs are out. So uh, on that note, that means the, uh, the max configuration that you can get for this machine is 144 gigabytes. Uh, but before we get to that, Let's talk about the different types. Uh, there's two types of RAM that you can use. You can use ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use ECC unbuffered, which is your traditional server UDIM. Uh, no, it is not a desktop DIM. Um, we recommend ECC registered really just because you can get a higher max out of it, which is 144 gigabytes via 916 gigs at 1600 megahertz. Now, with uh, ECC unbuffered, you can only get uh, six 8 gigs for a total of 48 gigabytes at, again, 1600 megahertz. Uh, um, now, uh, the problem with uh, Unbuffered is one, they cost more per, per gigabyte, and two, the scalability is a lot less. So really, we don't even sell the Unbuffered for this machine. We always tell our customers to go ECC registered. It's just the, the best uh, route to go, uh, you know, more affordable and higher scalability. Uh, but I will note, you can't mix them together. So if you currently have ECC and Buffered in your machine and you want to continue to utilize the modules you have, then you're going to have to buy unbuffered modules. If that's the case, uh, you can just email us and we can help you out with that. Um, another thing I wanted to note, uh, we have a lot of questions people ask us about um, the difference between uh, this machine as uh, and the R5500, which is the rack mount version, uh, and that actually has 12 slots. So uh, I wanted to just let everyone know we have a link for, this, uh, for that video. If you're interested to learn more about it, you can just click on that and learn a little bit about it. So anyhow, now that we know more about the uh, T5500, we're going to go ahead and open it up, show you how to take out the riser, how to install the DIMMs, uh, show you the different channels. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside a machine without ESD gear because you could potentially uh, shock it and damage the parts or the motherboard inside. Um, if you're at home, and using this as a desktop or as a gaming machine, I get it, you probably don't have ESD gear. So here's what I recommend. Uh, two things, one, don't open it on carpet, especially the old school shaggy carpet, which I love, by the way, if you have that at your house. Um, but don't open it on carpet. You're just going to um, uh, potentially damage it. If you could uh, disconnect it and hook it up to, or put it on a table or a desk or something like that, um, it'll just be much safer for the inside of the machine. And two, if you have a piece of copper or metal that you can just go uh, and grab, it'll actually help to dissipate some of the electrostatic discharges on your hand that you might not realize you have. Um, so those two things will just be a little bit safer at home if you don't have gear. So anyhow, I'm going to grab mine. I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. I'm going to show you this from two different angles. Um, first, just the top view. It's really simple. It's like pretty much any other desktop. Some of them are actually on the side. This one's on the top. You're just going to pull this back, and the top is going to come open. There we go. So the top will just pop open, okay, just like that. So I'll show you from the side. 
All right, just doing a different view of how to open it. You're just gonna push this tab right here. Sometimes you'll have to push it kind of hard to get it to fully open up. And then the top will just come right off and push it to the side. All right, now that we are in, um, you'll notice a lot going on in here. Um, so he, this is the uh, optional riser, um, which is one of the things I'm sure a lot of people are here to learn a little bit more about. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, how to take that out to start with. Um, and then after we take that out, we'll kind of go over some of the channels on uh, CPU1 and CPU2. So um, here's how you do. Um, first thing I recommend is actually uh, to work here. You can pull this blue tab right here. And this is on a hinge, and you just want it to come straight up. Okay. And now I'm just going to leave it kind of out of the way. And now I have access to uh, the dims and the riser. With the riser, you are going to pull this up and it's going to come straight up. Okay. I do note there's cables. You do need to be careful with it. And it is connected at the bottom with these two connectors. Okay. So just something to note. Um, I'm going to put it to the side right now. Uh, I like to personally just disconnect this connector because it just seems to always be a pain and get in the way as we continue to move forward. So personally, I just like to take it to the side. So uh, I'm going to try and position this so hopefully it's at a good angle for the camera for you guys. Um, so you'll notice there are uh, three dims right here with the riser. And then there are the main six DIMMs on CPU-1. So uh, CPU-1 here controls the uh, uh, six DIMM slots here. CPU-2 controls the three DIMM slots over here. Uh, with CPU-1, uh, there are uh, three memory channels, and there are two DIMMs per channel. With CPU-2, uh, there are three channels, and there's only one DIMM per channel. Basically, each DIMM slot is its own channel. Okay. Uh, so the importance of that is if you are only, let's just say you don't have the riser, and you only have CPU-1, and you're only looking to put in three 8 gigs, or three 16 gigs, or three 4 gigs, or something to that effect, uh, which I would personally always recommend uh, to try to max this out and to, to put a little bit more into it, but not everybody uh, needs the most robust machine, and I get that. Uh, so if that's uh, what you're looking to do, and you're at home, and you're like, hey, you know, I need to you know, add in three 16 gigs, what's the best way to do it? Well, that's a great question. You want to use the start of each memory channel which are the three white DIMM slots, okay? And Dell has them labeled as well. This is DIMM 1, this is DIMM 2, this is DIMM 3. Circle back, this is DIMM 4, DIMM 5, then DIMM 6, okay? So they're labeled and color coded, which makes it very easy uh, and user friendly for you to be able to upgrade it yourself. Even if you're not a technician at home, uh, I still tell people, don't worry, uh, this is very easy to do. Watch a video like this and you can knock it out with ease, okay? So um, on the flip side over here, uh, you'll notice there are uh, these are all three white dim slots, which means each one of these uh, is their own individual channel. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start uh, to load this up. Uh, before we do, uh, one of the things that I personally like to do, I already opened up all my tabs uh, just to make sh make it easier. So when I'm loading them, I'm not fumbling around. The other thing is I always like to point out there is a key this notch right here that you see in the middle, this key is important on the module because it uh, lets, lets you know, one, how to actually load it because it's not perfectly in the center, um, so you need to make sure you have your module lined up the correct way or you could potentially damage the DIMM slot or damage the DIMM itself, uh, but it also prevents users from putting in the wrong module. You couldn't put it in you know, DDR2 or DDR4, it just physically wouldn't fit, okay? So in our case, we need to actually flip it this way. I'm going to start with the very first channel, which is DIMM1. Okay, so you will see the module is physically in there right now. I'm not holding it, it's, it's, it's in the slot. However, it's not actually properly seated and this is a common thing that we see all the time where a customer thinks that they've uh, loaded their DIMMs um, and it's not fully seated and they think that they have a failure uh, and it's, it's always, it seems like you know, 9 out of 10 it's always a, 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 a seating issue. So uh, this is what you want to do, you want to listen for this click right here. You want to hear it on both sides. That's basically the uh, the tabs are uh, hooking to the, the little notches on the uh, the outside of the dims, and it's just pulling it in and making sure that the leads are fully inserted, uh, and then now the module actually registers. So it's a really common issue, um, and I tell people I don't care if you've been a you know a technician for 20 years. It's your first day on the job. Uh, you know everyone does it. Heck, I did it last week uh, doing one of our videos. So it's a real common mistake. So uh, just something I always tell people to kind of keep their eye out for because it's uh, probably the the most common mistake that I do see out there. So 
All right, so now that we've done the first six on CPU one, I want to show you how to do the riser on uh, CPU two. Uh, hopefully this is in a good position for the camera here. Uh, so you're going to see this tab right here. You're just going to simply pull it in like that. You see how you're going to pull it in, and it's going to come straight up. So you're just going to lift straight up here. Okay. Now you have to be kind of careful because there's a cord uh, or a cable down here that's connected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, disconnect it for now and put it back in at the end. Um, but you just got to be careful because you never want to accidentally disconnect the uh, cables themselves. Okay, that thing was in there. All right, so now that we're in here, um, we kind of talked about each one of these uh, DIMMs is their own memory channel, which is very nice, uh, makes it very easy, um, which is also, if you were using unbuffered DIMMs, how you get to your six, you use these three slots and then the three white slots on CPU one. Okay, so just like on the last one, you need to make sure we line everything up properly. So this is lined up there. I'm actually going to wait to push them all in at the very end, just because I'm kind of on an unstable surface. If I were not doing this on video, I'd be doing it on the table, uh, but it's kind of uneven right here, so I don't want to push it down and have something go flying up on accident. Okay, so uh, again, when you push them down, you need to just make sure you hear the clicks. Okay, just the clicks, you just want to hear the clicks, that's two. And there's your third module. So just like that, really wasn't that hard. Uh, just a couple little tricks with uh, the riser, but for the most part, you can see it's very simple. Uh, as far as putting this back in, it's literally just going to go straight back down, and it's going to click into place. And then we need to put the cable back in. Okay, and just like that, we've got it done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and actually put the riser uh, back in now, okay? Uh, so the riser, you just wanna make sure you line everything up, and then again, you need to be careful with the connectors, okay? So it lines up, the metal piece just goes right through the slot, and it's gonna come down, all right. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and close it up, we've got it I can see the connectors are down there. I can see they are lined up. So now we're just going to close it up. Fortunately, sometimes it's a little finicky like that. All right, uh, just like that. Now we got the riser done. Um, I need to make sure I actually connect it back. Don't want to forget that. So we're going to put our connector back in. And that's also a common mistake that is easy to do. You get all the way done, you put it all back together, and then you're like, oh man, I forgot to put the connector back. All right, we're going to close this back down. You're going to see this is going to clip into place. And just like that, we did it. So in a matter of minutes, uh, it's really not that hard to do. Um, and you know, I would recommend to someone at home, if, if you're looking to uh, get a better performance out of your T5500, uh, you're using this for gaming, you're using this for your, your office, um, your home office uh, desktop, uh, really the, the quickest band-aid uh, to, to boost your performance and kind of extend the, uh, the, the life of your system is, is memory upgrades. Um, that's what we always recommend to people. Uh, it'll make everything a heck of a lot easier and, and a lot faster for you. Um, and if you need any upgrades yourself, uh, do us a favor. Email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love to help you out. We got a ton of different options in stock for this right now. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor. Click that like and smash that, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.